people are starting to come around to the idea that if you see aphids, you don't necessarily need to do anything if there's enough predators present. But for some people, the hurdle is still, what do the predators look like? Today, I want to show you. I'm David Spencer. Welcome to Gardening with Bugs. Aphids are in full swing right now. The predators are present, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to contribute much to the control, at least not right off the bat. And so your threshold of where you're, you're going to become intolerant of the aphid population is just around the corner. And that's because we have to wait for those aphid populations to get extreme, and then the predators catch up, and then they start to take over when we do nothing. But let's take a look around the property today, and I'll show you some some signs that an aphid population is about to explode. It's, going, it's at the beginning stages and then others where it's at the end stages. So first off, right behind me is these are these poppies. Now the poppies do have an aphid, a uh, black cherry aphid, I believe it is, or just another black aphid, and it shows up right around now. So in the last couple days I've been monitoring where one winged aphid, called an alate aphid, has arrived on the plant and then its offspring have been live birth. They don't have wings, but they begin feeding. They're all female, by the way. Uh, they begin feeding and then that population begins to grow. And so I've watched this one and it wasn't until just before I started this video that I started to see multiple alate aphids show up. So I know that they're now coming from somewhere um, and then attacking my crop. So this is at the beginning stages of an aphid problem. Now, if I was really concerned if this was in a greenhouse or this was really a prize crop for me, um, I might use an intervention. I could just right now spray them off with some water. Again, I never recommend soap or any household detergent, obviously no, no kind of chemical pesticides. And that's because if I miss any or if that doesn't kill them, the aphids will still come back, but the predators won't because your plant reacts to those things. It reacts to soaps and detergents and acids and bases and it reacts to the chemicals and it leaves a smell and in some cases the predators need to smell the aphid to come back um, or they're seeing signs of a specific sign a specific wavelength or something like that that the plant is emitting to show that it has an aphid infestation and if that's not the case if instead it's showing signs of stress from a chemical they may just go right past that plant so it's important if you are going to intervene right now at this early stage, just a quick blast of water or squish them with your thumb. You don't need to worry about the predators being present at this case because they usually don't catch up that quickly. Here's an example of a late stage infestation. So what you'll see here as we flip over leaves on the cherry tree is we're going to see aphid populations like really thick on this plant. They're tended to by ants and you're going to start to see areas where they have been fed upon and these are where you see that these all these dead carcasses here they're not the actual aphid themselves so this one is in a full-blown uh, population right now there's signs of predation as well there's eggs all over the place all i really need to do to get control here is trap these ants and then all of these hoverfly eggs or lacewing eggs that start showing up or there's ladybug eggs here as well all of these that are n have arrived naturally will take over quite quickly and not give these aphids really an opportunity to spread. Interestingly, I found this on the apple tree today and this is a population of aphids that's um, it's, it's booming but it's also at a, at a trigger point to spread and you can tell because of the number of alate aphids. So again, the alate is the winged aphid. Sometimes these can be male um, but that it's still kind of rare. They're, in most cases they're always female. Uh, but the point of this stage is there's a trigger, whether it's a climate and environmental sort of thing, or if it's just a population trigger, suddenly the aphids get live birth with wings. They become these alate ones in order to spread, uh, to spread out and infect new plants. So typically when you see a bunch of alate aphids like this, that's a sign that they have reached a population that is not suitable for where they are now and they're going to spread out. 
So remember, aphids, when, the, when an adult lands, the aphids don't necessarily lay eggs, right? They're live birth. So don't be looking for aphid eggs. Although they exist, they're, um, they're so seldomly seen that it doesn't really matter. Almost all, in all cases, like percentage-wise, it's like 99.9% .9 of all aphids are born live birth as clones from their, from their mother. So don't be looking for, for signs of eggs. If you see eggs, especially if they're white, they're probably not aphid eggs. The aphid eggs are actually quite uh, large compared to the aphid body themselves and usually black. Um, and even in that case, most in most cases, they're overwintering in egg form and the eggs rarely survive. Anyways, they have a pretty high percentage of mortality. So do not worry about aphid eggs. Um, and in most cases, you're not seeing aphid eggs. But the next stage is these tiny little aphids uh, that are just feeding, multiplying. They're not even really moving. They can go up and down the plant. They can drop from the plant and crawl back up, which is one of their defenses against predation. But otherwise, it's really this stage where they all look the same, just different sizes. And then they become alate and they fly off. So here are some ladybug eggs. And these uh, are yellow, typically. And that's at least where, where I live. I haven't seen another color. We do have quite a few species of native ladybugs that show up here and are aphid predators. So they all kind of, I'll, I'll see them in aphid pop populated areas um, and they'll develop into these uh, nymphs which will run around eating aphids and they'll pupate generally on the same plant before re-emerging as adults. Now I'm gonna walk you through a couple of these different predators and the weird kind of life stages that they have because they don't look anything like the adult in a lot of cases. So it's important to be able to identify some of these really ugly babies of some beautiful adults <laughs> that will help with your aphid predation. So here's a bunch of hoverfly eggs again. So these are singularly laid. They're like a grain of rice, um, kind of like a long oval shape in most cases. They can be different sizes based on the, the species. I did a wild collection of the hoverflies in my garden a few years back and we had six different species and there could have been way more but I had six different species that I um, attracted by baiting them with an aphid population so I assume that they are aphid predators. Um, in most cases I could actually rear them out and feed them on aphids and so all of those had the similar shape and color egg which is a white sort of oval shaped egg. So if you see these always kind of singularly, they might be in like a, in a small group of two or three, but almost always just singularly laid on, on plant tissue. Uh, this is a hoverfly egg. Now the hoverfly is this beautiful striking pollinator. Uh, you'll see it on the flowers all the time. It usually comes in, hovers, looks at your flower a little bit before landing there. And that's because it's, it's very cautious about ambush spiders. Um, as well as other uh, other predators and it, that's also how it looks for aphids you'll see it kind of fly around inside a canopy it's sniffing the air um, it's using its eyesight and when it finds one it'll go down there and lay a single single egg now this beautiful hoverfly has a very ugly larva and it's really bizarre in most cases when people see these larvae they kill it they think it's a slug or a worm um, or they don't differentiate between it and a caterpillar or it and some sort of like wire worm or other beetle larva that's damaging their plant and so they get killed. So the biggest takeaway from this video is I want you to know what a hoverfly larva looks like so that you just leave it alone. In the case of Eupedes americanus, which is sort of an eastern, uh, eastern species of a hoverfly that goes everywhere from like northern Quebec down to Mexico, it's migratory. Um, it can, it's been measured for how much it eats as 2,200 aphids in its sort of short one week life stage as a larva. And that is amongst the biggest aphid predators when we talk about insects anyways, um, like far greater than any of the ladybugs. So this is by far the one that you want to encourage with both flowers in your yard for the adults and aphids so that you can get the population going. Remember, don't just wipe out aphid populations. They're good for all sorts of things, including here you'll see these bumblebees are feeding on the nectar or on the honeydew, which is in place of the nectar, which is their fuel. The pollen that they have on their legs that they're collecting is important as a protein source, but it's really the nectar or the honeydew that they're collecting from aphids in this case that gives them sort of that drive for long migration, the energy to go collect the pollen. So remember aphids, are good as long as you can tolerate them. 
it's a bit early for uh, lace wings here. Uh, what I'll tend to find is um, green lace wings kind of sh they show up. There's several species of green lace wings, some of which you can commercially buy. Um, and there's brown lace wings as well. Also, you can commercially buy some of these as well. Um, and they show up. Now, the difference between the green and the brown is the brown lay eggs just like a hoverfly, kind of singularly. They're white right on the plant tissue themselves, almost the same shape, but usually quite a bit smaller. The green lace wings are very easy to identify because while the egg is the same, it's laid on a long string that hangs down from the underside, typically of plant tissue like a leaf. And the reason is they're highly cannibalistic. So this like ability to plant to lay them singularly or on the string prevents them from being eaten by their neighbors. Just like the hoverfly, it's important to to know what the lace wing looks like, and it's important to know what the lace wing larva look like because again, they're shockingly different from what the adult looks like. And while you may not be as inclined to squish it like you might be with a hoverfly because it, it's sort of unique looking, it still looks so little like the adult that most people get very confused as to what it is and what it's doing. Maybe they think it's like an earwig or something like that. So again, this one, similarly, it's important to recognize what it is and what it's doing in your yard. And in most cases, these are almost exclusively aphid feeders. So let them be as well because they will clean up your aphid populations. Lastly, I often mention the parasitoids. So remember a parasite is something that attaches to the body and, it, and it, it's feeding on the host, but it's not killing the host. As soon as we use the term parasitoid, that means that in its ability to live and reproduce, it kills the host. So aphids have, they might have parasites as well, but what we're interested in is the parasitoids of aphids. And there are again, many. Some of them are commercially available and most of those are the aphidious species, aphidious group. Um, and there's other ones like prions that kind of show up uh, naturally. Now, the only way to kind of identify these is by the dead aphids themselves. So what happens is these tiny wasps is what they are. They're in the wasp family. They don't look anything like a yellow jacket. They're very tiny, usually all black. Well, they might have other colors, but you're going to see them as black by the naked eye. Uh, they sting and inject an egg into a living aphid. That aphid can survive for up to three weeks with this wasp larva inside it before it finally takes it over. Um, moves it to a safe area and then starts to crystallize the outside of the aphid creating basically a cocoon and in that cocoon or pupa it develops as the full adult and eventually pokes a hole out and emerges as a new adult wasp that'll go on and sting other ones now i know that sounds crazy and alien and that's because a lot of the alien movies take their inspiration from the crazy world of insects of all and the main reason why we say don't just quickly get rid of aphids even if you don't see predators there like if you can leave them leave them and that's because for like three weeks after parasitization you can't tell they don't look like anything you would have to dissect these aphids to find the larva inside to know that they have been parasitized. So in some cases, just imagine that they are and wait and see what happens. And the, sometimes the results are shocking. So here is a whole bunch that have been parasitized. Eventually you'll see a little exit hole. That means that they have, that pupa is finished and the adult has emerged. And notice they're sort of bronze color. They're usually swollen, so a bit larger than the adult, than the aphid was when it was parasitized. So there's a look at a couple of the aphid predators that at least I mention often, but I think are also sort of the most common ones in the yard. Yes, hummingbirds are predators and some of the other birds are as well that can pick individual aphids off leaves. Uh, there's all sorts of beetles that might take care of them as well, but these are sort of the common ones that you're going to see. So it's important, as I always say, especially from my perspective at gardening with bugs, is the key to all of this is just having a bit of patience and tolerance for aphids in general. If you're willing to just let them be long enough to see what naturally takes place in your garden, you're gonna have way more confidence just to, just to leave it alone. But, but you still need to know, like aphids do have that potential to really damage plants. They can kill growing tips and cause all sorts of deformation of the plant. So you still have to be aware that there may be an intervention needed. And then of course you can buy beneficial insects, which is called augmentative biocontrol. So it's a natural, 
naturally occurring predator that you're just pumping into your yard in greater numbers, especially early in the season when they haven't really shown up yet. Um, but you could also just leave them, maybe monitor it. You could always just pull the leaf off and toss it somewhere else. And that time period of them walking around, they'll be predated on anyways, feeding the natural predators. So remember, just wait and see what happens as long as you can. And I think you'll be a more confident grower because of that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe and tune in for more. Thanks for watching.